Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the five things that you need to do in order to get the most out of your Rode Wireless Go. As with all technology, whether it's related to audio or video production, the end result is dependent on many factors that go beyond the technology itself. While the Rode Wireless Go is a very decent sounding microphone for its size and price, it pays to have a basic understanding of audio and the environment that you're shooting in so that you get the best out of the microphone that you possibly can. The Wireless Go is an omnidirectional capsule microphone, so it picks up sound from every direction, but depending on how it's positioned near the vocal source and what levels you set on the microphone and the recorder, you'll get a varying degree of clarity and presence. So let's start with the first thing that you can do to make sure that you're getting the best out of your Wireless Go, and that is to listen to the room and decide how much echo is present and position the microphone in the appropriate manner. It's also worth understanding how it sounds different depending on the angle that you position it on the subject. I found that for a lot of clothes that you're wearing, it tends to slot in very easily and position the microphone to the side. And when you do that, you're kind of missing out on some of the subtlety and tones in the voice compared to when you position it upwards towards the actual vocal source. So if you can position it that way, you're gonna get a much better sound than positioning it down or to the side. And also, as I mentioned, depending on the amount of reverb in your room, the closer you get, the more chance you'll have of eliminating unnecessary reverb and reflection compared to when you have it down lower. So in my opinion, if you can get it about here in this position, which is probably about less than 10 centimeters away from the voice, angled upwards, you're gonna get the best possible quality sound. You can't always do that because some subject matters that you have, if it's not always you, might be wearing different types of clothing that don't really allow you to position it exactly in that spot. So if you have to go higher on a t-shirt, that can also work. But when you're doing that, you need to be pay attention to the levels that you're setting on the recording unit. And we'll talk about that shortly. The other thing to consider is that even though the Rode Wireless Go has its own built-in microphone, which you're probably gonna use most of the time, you can actually now buy an optional accessory, which is the Rode LavGo. So it's a wired lavalier mic that goes into this unit. And you can position this down lower on the subject, completely out of frame, and then you can feed up a lapel microphone and position it anywhere you like, and it's a much more subtle look. It's got nothing to do with the audio quality, really. It does sound slightly different to the microphone on the unit itself. No better or worse, just different but it just helps you get a different look, a more subtle look in your audio. And some clients are really fussy about that. They don't like to see the microphone in the actual video, so that might be a consideration. Now, the other thing I wanted to say about the environment that you're in, it really does vary significantly. If we head over into my main studio space, we can hear how completely different the microphone sounds when I'm in a different environment. As you can see, it's a completely different environment that I'm working in when I'm in this much larger space. And because it's larger, and the fact that it has a very limited amount of furniture, hardwood floors, no soft furnishings, no sound treatment, you're going to hear a significant amount of reflection as the audio is bouncing off the walls in this larger open space. And therefore it sounds much more echoey and has a lot more reverb, which you're gonna to have to take care of in post-production. Or if you wanna do your best to make it sound better as you're recording, perhaps consider positioning the microphone higher and much closer to the vocal source in order to minimize some of that reflection and reverb that's present in the room. In contrast to that interior space that we listened to earlier, we're now in the great outdoors. And as you can hear, the microphone sounds incredible outdoors. There's actually a lot of noise going on right now. There's planes overhead, there's wind, there's a rustling of the leaves here. And yet, because the microphone is so close to my voice and no matter how far back I stand from the camera, I'm always getting that consistent level of audio input and it does a really good job of isolating the vocals and making it stand out in the mix in the outdoors. And this is where I really feel this microphone shines. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the DB level setting on the Rode wireless receiver that's usually sitting on top of your camera or attached to your external 
audio recorder. You have three different options here. There's a button on front of the unit that allows you to go anywhere from zero to negative 12 or negative 24 dB. I've always found that zero is simply too loud and it sounds a little bit distorted when you're speaking with, at a high volume and also brings in so much room noise that it's very hard to get rid of it in post-production. Negative 12 is a sweet spot for me. Going down to negative 24, I found is just that little bit too low. Now you need to couple that up with the recording level on your camera or your audio recorder. And to do that, you've really got to put on a set of headphones so you can monitor the audio and decide what the right level is on both the Rode wireless receiver and also on the audio unit itself. This is really important not to leave it to chance, not to monitor without headphones. By putting the headphones on, you'll be able to hear exactly the level that you're getting into the recording unit. And I feel that's really important to get this right during the recording and not have to try and compensate and improve it in post-production. And it doesn't always work when you're trying to fix bad audio. The other thing to consider is to use an external audio recorder rather than relying on the audio quality of your camera. Now, if you have one of the latest generations of mirrorless cameras, DSLRs, or a really high-end camera, then you are probably gonna get a very decent audio quality directly in the camera. But for older generation of cameras, you'll probably find they just don't sound as good. They'll have some line noise, and the quality of the audio, despite how good the Rode Wireless Go is, is not gonna be optimal. In that case, I would highly recommend an external audio recorder such as the Zoom H1, which I'm using for this recording. The Zoom H1 lets you record in 48 kilohertz, which is a cut above the 41 or 44 kilohertz rate that you'll get on a lot of DSLR and mirrorless cameras. So in my opinion, that little bit extra resolution in audio just makes it sound so much better. So if at all possible, record to an audio recorder, and then sync it up in post-production. Obviously the downside is that you have a little bit more work to do in post-production, but having said that, with today's video editing software titles such as Premiere and DaVinci Resolve, it's very easy to do, so not really a barrier as far as I'm concerned. The next thing, and this has caught me out on a couple of occasions now until I finally worked it out, is to avoid having devices that could present some electrical interference in the recording. So being a wireless device, it is sensitive to electrical devices at certain times, depending on the proximity. So having tested it in various commercial locations, in my home studio and outdoor settings, it was very rare that I ever experienced electrical interference in the audio signal. But there was one occasion in particular that took me by surprise, and that was when I had my iPad set up as a teleprompter. It was actually sitting up really close to the receiver, right in front of the lens of the camera. I was recording a client, and I could hear when I was monitoring the audio, very occasionally, an audio signal of interference come through the recording, and it was turned out to be it was the Wi-Fi of the iPad. So every time it would make a connection and look for the Wi-Fi signal, there would be a electrical interference sound that would come through the recording. So in order to get around that problem, I simply removed the receiver further away from the iPad and it fixed the problem instantly. And the final thing I wanted to mention is EQ. Now, the microphone sounds great as it is, but as with all video productions, you really need to be thinking about the EQ in order to make the audio stand out of the mix, especially if you have a music backing track. So some of the effects that you could consider using, which are in most popular video editing software titles, include a parametric equalizer, a limiter, and a compressor. And if you find there is some room noise present that you weren't able to eliminate during the recording, you can use some very subtle noise reduction to tidy up that noise. And once you've done that, you should find that you're getting an awesome sound out of your Rode Wireless Go. So hopefully these tips have been useful. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to put them in the comments box below and I'll endeavor to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.